Because you sit for months in front of a painting. Yeah, that's right. I've seen a person watches it for four or five seconds. It's really lucky. true. It's really true. Yeah. So I'm going to go over this, and then um, I'm going to show the graphic. It got you up as a, a writer, artist, and um, and um, well, I'm a playwright, director, actor, actor. By yeah, but basically that's how I make my money. Welcome, welcome, very, very much to conversation. A pleasure, welcome, Graham, dear friend of mine and of the world, the Frank Craven, and he's one of the members of the crew or of the faculty, if we could call it, at. Uh, Manhattan Neighborhood Network, an autodidactic university that's putting out great programming. He has a program that airs regularly called uh, What's Ailing and Healing America. Really good. He's, he's billed as a, an actor, and he's from a famous actor family. We want to talk some about that. And he's also billed as a writer, and he writes magnificently on all kinds of matter, from film reviews to things political. He's written... Uh, very, very well. And he's also an artist. And we're going to try to show some of the artwork that we haven't shown so much in previous programs. It's an honor and a pr privilege to welcome my good friend Frank Craven to the program. Thank you, Harold. And it's an honor to be with you because you've been on public access for almost 30 years and you're one of the oldest public access producers in the world. I'm just about getting old. Yeah. <laughs> and it's not it's about 37 that we've been on the cable. Yeah. Oh it, so that, it goes back a long time. But anyway, Frank. I have a good track record. I've been on for eight years every okay. week. Friday nights at 930. What's yeah. ailing? Healing America. Yeah. And I've won a few awards and I have some pretty good programs. Yeah. You won some of those awards from the Alliance. I and find all this that. Manhattan Neighborhood Network community great. I want to thank Willie Stooks and Michelle and, and Josh Walensky in the booth because they're, they're here. George Sartorellis. George Sartorellis, God bless you, and yes. all the rest of the gang that often comes around, Gloria Messer and who, these people are, work as volunteers. They yeah. just do it for love. We all produce the show not for money, mm. but just because we want to communicate with the world and share. Share. Could you say that again? <laughs> no, <laughs> that we don't do it for money, right? and it's not in the material world, or it doesn't have to be in the world of the money give and take, or the business world, yeah. sets it apart from the rest of communications, I would submit. Right, and also there's an earnest r desire for the truth, alternative healing modalities, the amount of people at the p peace rallies, the tr real story like DeAndre Darrell uh, be behind the real news, or people that are victimized by political malfeasance and mm -hmm. stuff. What's their story? The street mm -hmm. news. That's yeah. where you're going to get it on public access. Yeah, and you worked with Indio on that. We used to write great articles yeah. for street news. Really good. It's a, still a really good magazine right. or a newspaper and everything. And you wrote magnificently well-written articles on that. Yeah, right alongside Mamiya Abdul-Jamal or Robert Letterman, who was very insightful and yeah. intelligent writer, too. Yeah, right, right. Well, that's good. But And it's for the people. And it's been set aside and it's for the people. And we're part of the the population and it's very important but why don't you share just briefly and then we want to get to your paintings and that sort of thing the unique craven family history in terms and how it relates to theater oh, okay. in the history of the united states because it's worth mentioning you come from a noted uh, theatrical family background yeah i dare say i'm one of uh, america's foremost acting families because uh... My great-grandfather, John T. Craven, has played bills with Je Joseph Jeff Jefferson and Evan Booth. And my with grand Booth? Edwin, Edwin Booth, Edwin jo Booth. Joseph Booth. I'm still I'm an honorary players member. And uh, my, my uh, gr grandfather, Frank Craven, of course, wrote and directed many plays in the early 20s and the turn of the century. And he was a famous MGM star and famous in Hollywood. His first wife, uh, his wife, uh, my grandmother Maisie, she was first married to Arnold Daly. They brought George Bernard Shaw to the States. Wow. And she was cousin to Maurice Blythe, Herbert Blythe, who changed his name to, to uh, Barrymore. And they had Lionel, Ethel, and John because it, was, it fit longer on the market. <laughs> yes, you know? right, right, so right. So they're like cousins, so mm -hmm. to speak. Mm -hmm. And of course, my grandfather, Frank Craven, was a pipe smoking gentleman of our town, famous actor, yeah. very, very esteemed of yesteryear. Yeah, he my that was a major too. role, yeah. My dad, too, taught drama at the high school. He was a star on Broadway, and he was actually the first lead actor of television. That would be John. John Craven, my dad. He, he passed away about 10 years ago, but his, uh, his legacy is not only starring on Broadway, touring the country, doing lots of theater, 
and movies and Twilight Zones and Hitchcock Presents and early television when there was mm. real quality on television instead yeah. of dysfunctional families and violence. <laughs> yes. But they had Shakespeare and they had real entertainment. Yeah. But he did the first, he was the first leading man of a television series in experimental TV by 1950-51. You can see it at the Museum of Broadcasting uh -huh. in the show called The Egg and I. The Egg and I? There was that one of a series? Like <laughs> no, it was, like, it was like Green Acres. It was a city folks living oh. in the country. It was a comedy. Oh, I and see. And they said okay, they would right. improvise. They'd throw a chicken on the set or a cat you know, yeah. and, 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 and the, the show only ran 15 minutes because in those days the lights were this big. Yeah. And the cameras, were, it was so hot. Yep. You get on the set, you couldn't go more than 15 minutes. Like going into and out of a sauna or something. Yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. But then the family goes, and it goes back in terms of your family. John has a son, Frank. Frank has a son, John. John has, and it goes back to the time of Lincoln. Yeah. In terms of the American theater. It's a famous right. name. Yeah, they were always circle. well known. I don't know. Star, fame has eluded me, but I've, I've had about 12 plays produced, actually. maybe just waiting for you. Yes, right. It the might best be years just over, to somewhere over a <laughs> rainbow, Frank will shine. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. George Clooney, move over. Mm -hmm. Richard Gere, get out of here. Damn right. <laughs> Let the real talent through. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, they're talented. Yeah, the I idea know. is that what's happened is that I've always focused on, my dad said, keep your politics in your back pocket. Mm -hmm. You know, when you, when you go in the voting booth, it's private. But I've always been on the forefront of human rights and social activism through play writing and staging plays and being very vociferous with my politics because I grew up in Spain, in Barcelona, Aha! beaten up by Franco's police, mm -hmm. speaking Spanish. Mm -hmm. I understand the refugees' plight and how they're escaping fascism. Wow. And I see this iron fist of fascism going through every government, especially ours, that's trying to manipulate and control everything and use soldiers as police. Was it, the arts are usually on the side of, uh, you know, the artists, the community is usually on the side of justice, it seems to me. Well, sure. Are they political? Are they deliberately not political, people that are in the theater, uh, or artists in general? What is the role of the artist in terms of the liaison with the political process, do you think, generally? And then what was the role of your family through time in terms of relating to the political reality through their work? Well, as I say, my grandfather and great-grandfather and dad were all very famous and well-off, and they made a lot of money, and most people that are successful don't want to rock the boat. And uh, when you're making the good money, they'd rather keep their politics quiet, you know, unless you're someone like Sean Penn, you know, or maybe, you know, Christina Ebersole or some famous actress or Merle Streep, who's a member of Amnesty International, and yeah. will, won't be afraid to say, let's look into 9-11 truth, let's impeach Bush, let's tip the boat. But, uh, you know, there's a time and a place for everything. Basically, art is entertainment, mm -hmm. and theater and movies are entertainment. People want to escape. So you either make documentaries or you make movies, which mm -hmm. are fantasy. And, you know, theater, you know, back to the George Bernard Shaw times, the Arms of the Man and uh, the Major Barbara, these are about Mm. Well, mm. war profiteers, yeah. which still goes on today. You know, mm. Halle Burton and all these people, they make money. Yeah. You had to invest in Sikorsky helicopters in the Vietnam era. Mm. Now you invest in Halle Burton. And it's mm. like it's a vul vulture pr war profiteer culture that you either have conscience about and decide, I'm not going to play into that. I don't want to be a part of that. Or you just say, eh, I'll go with the flow. And... I don't know. That's why we're on public access TV, and the audience who's listening wants intelligent conversation and doesn't want commercial and mind-controlled war cheerleading crap. They, they want get a lot of that on network television. Yeah, seems, it would seem, or in radio, or you go back. Well, your family goes back before there was uh, even a magic lantern. My grandfather <laughs> used to have a thing called a magic lantern, essentially a slide machine. Yeah, and it was huge, and it had a stack, and it had smoke coming out of it. And they would <laughs> th you'd throw up slides of the catacombs of Rome or something, but right. it was a big deal. Right. And the, the media is all coming more or less recently, but it was all back to the theater in the 19th century. Yeah, theater is a great art form, obviously going way back thousands of years in the Greek theater and whatever, but even in churches, it's sort of like theater. They put on a show, staging a show, dramatizing something. Most churches get together, put on their Christmas pageant, and mm -hmm. kids in school love it. It's something in our nature to to play a part and 
change our voice and, you know, and camouflage and, and unmask our, our and un, unreveal ourselves through another character. It's a great, it's a great art form. Yeah, yeah, it really it's brilliant. Is. Why didn't they let them into polite society so often? There was a church. Well, in the, the yesteryear, year, actors weren't allowed because of the actors were usually hung out to dry because they were traveling troops, and you know the producer would make off the money, and so they'd be like a roving band of gypsies throughout Europe too. They're like the Commedia dell'arte, street theater. These are like gypsies, and people who just pass the hat and they perform, and they're buskers, like buskers. They call them. Yeah, they buskers are, yeah. or beggars, and people that are just performing, mm -hmm. street performers, and so it's like it wasn't honorable or dignified, mm -hmm. and so. But uh, nowadays, with unions and more controls, there's not, the, the stigma's off being an actor. In fact, it's very prestigious to be an actor. It's, now the it's gone the opposite direction. It has from what it was. It's totally when, ridiculous. I think it's very it? overrated because if you're a good actor, you keep your balance, you learn your lines, and you know your character. Yeah. It's, it's not a big deal. It's not Wh brain surgery. When did it go be from good being actor? Uh, uh, to being, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, a looked at askance to being the ticket to uh, iconic fame. Well, with the, yeah, the think, movies. With movies. Yeah, well, in the, so the, the theater was always century. respected by the turn of the century and in the 20s. But the, the, when the, when the, the movies, you know, made everyone idealize, and television is like, woo, and suddenly the movie star syndrome was born. But, but before the movie star syndrome was happening, it was just, yeah, you were a prestigious actor, but you had to work. You had to learn a thick script, you know, and be in repertoire and know your Shakespeare backwards and forward, not they, flub your lines. They had repertoire great in England, didn't they? Sure, and they yeah, still yeah. have repertory theaters. But uh, they have teleprompters and ear cues and, uh, you know, the magnetic tapes and God knows what. Just learn your lines and get your character, and, you know, it's, it's tough being a good actor on stage. But it's this, fun. They have this guy. If you love it, it's not difficult. And they have this thing, the method or something where they go into getting into so what is that about did you do the that method show well, Stanislavski the method and Mirhold and Constantine all. Stanislavski had revolutionized this method of acting what he called a method which instead of being like hand-bone over dramatic acting oh you've taken my sweetheart I you, will shoot you you no, just no. did <laughs> you, you acted that right, right well, that was yeah. the old school right. acting and the method came out from within it's finding within and finding the sense memory of when you were broken hearted and trying to get those tears going which I I don't entirely agree with. You don't agree with the method? Well, to some degree I do. It's, uh -huh. it's funny. There was an anecdote when they were shooting the Marathon Man between Dustin Hoffman and uh, Lawrence Olivier. Yeah. Lawrence Olivier was Oh, great. you know, he was brilliant, right? Yeah. And he was yeah. just a natural actor. Yeah. Natural actor. That's interesting. Come yeah. back to that. That's yeah. how I feel like a natural, yeah. just born with it. Some people are trained and trained and they're still stiff. Mm -hmm. And some guys, without much training, are just sincere and they got it. And they got a sense of how to get into the part and make it happen. Yeah, well, people just living their lives. I see Academy Award performances every day when I walk the streets but of Manhattan. But wait a second. But wait a minute. I know that's uh, <laughs> Phil Philistine. To no, take it's that just attitude. that... You want to learn lines, you know. Yeah. When you see when you see people on the street going through changes, mm -hmm. that's life. That's yeah, like improvisation. That's reality. That's reality. Well, yeah. We're talking about learning lines, rehearsing cues, kissing on cue, crying on cue, feeling the emotion where where emotions evoked, and I'm like my heart's in my chest because wow, that guy got it, and uh, and he studied, and he would he takes off his makeup and costume, and you don't even recognize him. Yeah, but it's like in Hollywood, they say when you learn to fake sincerity, you got it made. <laughs> right. You know where you're. You're faking. You're putting well, it over. It's what you're it's not acting. really reacting to what you're feeling. You got the lines. I never could understand it. My daughter's in theater. I've talked to you about this. She, she thinks I'm Philistine because it's like you're going to act as though your dog just died and your dog didn't just die. Yeah. But if your dog just died, you're acting. I mean, you're right. not acting. You're being authentic right. in terms of the emotions well, that you're really feeling. You want to bring so up the, 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 the And did they think of the actors as conjurers? It's like uh, you're going to try and get over on people. You're going to try and act no, rather no, 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 than no, be what you Come on, Harold. Okay. Wait, relax. Okay. It's, a writer writes a story, mm -hmm. and when you read the story, it's a good read. You cry. You feel emotion. Yeah. And that's what we want because we're emotional beings. We're spiritual beings connecting to an intellectual storyline. Uh -huh. Now, the director and the Hollywood puts together a big budget and puts on costumes and makeup and you've got to make that story happen, bring mm -hmm. it to life. Mm -hmm. So the art of acting is to recreate that whole emotional drama. It's mm -hmm. all fake blood and it's all just a drama, but it's, it's not real, but you make it real. And you feel it, and you like identify the it's audience. Like art. Like, oh my heart! Is that got something to do with art? 
Is sure. It's an art. The, uh, yeah. Art, painting, uh, you're a painter. Yeah. And you're a writer. Yeah. And you're I'm also, also spiritual. You're yeah. also very spiritual. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Well, we all are. That's our saving grace. I have to be spiritual if I'm going to keep being political and do what I can because that, that gives me a sense of humor. Everything is spirit, you know. See, this is an inanimate object. Yeah. yeah. It's just an object. Yeah. But if it had spirit, it would run around the table like a little animal. That's right. That's what mm. spirit is. It's invisible, but mm. it's real. So spirit no. is everything. Spirit's connected to everything. Yeah. And we have to recognize recognize our spirituality our own way. I and it's very important the way people interrelate. Martin Buber wrote that famous book, uh, I, Thou, I, It, you know. You can no. have an I, Thou relationship with someone, or you have an I, It, an objectivized relationship with other people. Well, let me tell That's you, it's important. the greatest thing in the world to be in love, to, to have a feeling, a connection with God, and have a grounding with the Spirit, the Great Spirit, and suddenly you're not alone, and you have tremendous power and knowledge that, that and, and wisdom and insight and healing ability. That's what the Lord taught us that you when we gather in our name we can do miracles he was basically a healer mm. a revolutionary rabbi that was crucified you're talking now of jesus yeah yeah okay okay he was yeah. a revolutionary rabbi and mm -hmm. the, the reason the jews rejected him because he didn't say study 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 mm -hmm. go to synagogue mm -hmm. he gave his sermons on the mountain on the street and he got, said we can all do the miracles we can all we're all divine beings that's a pretty revolutionary thing to say it's one that's maybe emerging now well, On yeah, now, but now Chiron's coming into the planet, into our system, and the whole, the end of the Mayan code, the calendar is ending, and we're coming out of the Kali Yuga, the end of the dark, into the light, and we're a lot of lights hitting the planet, and people are waking up to their higher conscience, and now all bets are off, the year mm. 2000. Suddenly, you know, the DNA code is mapped, the gene code is mapped, the atom has been split, all secrets are off, there is no more secrets, uh -huh. and the fact is we are spirit, we mm. are God, and what we have done for the past 50,000 years is it maybe my five, ten thousand years uh, before Atlantis blew off, was that just experiment with separation and feel that we are not God. We are, we are not divine. We're just human. But no, we're coming into recognition that we are not. And suddenly, instead of two or three or five percent of our brain, which we n numb down with commercial TV, we're going to open up to nature and work with Earth and the cosmos and be f 20, 30, 40, 50 percent of our brain power and suddenly have far more telepathy, far more awareness and awakened conscience. Mm -hmm. And we got technology to help us extend that. Well, yeah. Technology extended consciousness. Well, yeah, technology is a byproduct of our intelligence. Yeah. Yeah, extended consciousness. Yeah. I would just want to finish the anecdote, the story Go ahead. between Dustin Hoffman and and and, and Lawrence Olivier when they mm. the marathon man when they yeah. said uh, yeah. he had to run around the pond and work up a little sweat. Yeah, and yeah. Lawrence said, My dear boy, why don't you just act? Uh. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> like yeah, yeah, yeah. Method yeah. is doing it, you know, really going through all the changes yeah. and creating the method of making reality. Or you want to reach down and recreate a moment of grief if that's what you have to act. You want yeah, to I don't remember believe, that. I don't, that's where I don't go. Because you don't it, go I, like I can that. cry on cue with great emotion, you but can? I don't. Can I don't, you make I don't, tears? I don't have to sit can here. Can you and make go. tears when you don't feel sad? Well, sure, but if uh, I'm with the really character, I mean, I'm not going to sit here and tell the crime. Maybe I can, but there's lots of tricks. You can mm -hmm. let your eyes water with eyes over, or you Onion? put, put onions onion. in your handkerchief mm -hmm. and stuff. But the best thing is to get into the character. You know, you you play your part. You got your character, and you're like staring off into space within the feelings of within the context of your uh, speech. Yeah, but do you take that attitude to you as you walk through life? And you relate to people? Do you take the same sort of an attitude as an actor on the stage? Well, I used to have a yeah. friend who got me in all kinds of trouble because <laughs> he thought reality was far too dull. We got to jazz things up. Right. And he was always interstage left. Every place we went, it was, he was on all yeah, the time. Yeah. And he was really good, really funny. Best actor and I've ever seen. There you go, seen. a sense of humor. Sure, yeah, I feel that yeah, this was earth also, walk, as the Native Americans call it, is really just a, a great dream, an illusion. And it is fun to have a sense of humor and play and poke fun with it oh, in a harmless way. The the important yeah. thing is not to have violence and hurt anybody and respect all of life. Yeah. And within that, within that framework, you're going to have lots of fun. Yeah, fun is really important. I don't think you it's can the only thing that matters. I find it. Why are we here? Uh, We're here to have fun and enjoy ourselves. Is That's it the just a big ha ha moment in the universe? Well, are we just, ha ha ha. We have all eternity. Yeah, yeah. We're divine energy. We're like mm -hmm. God incarnate. So mm -hmm. if we got all eternity, a hundred billion years is still nothing. Yeah. So what are we going to do? We're going to be in the void, or we're going to be in the mass conscious and the reality of? So we try out separation of 
God and live life in physical, limited form with five senses. Mm -hmm. But what's happening now is there's a lot of light hitting the planet. We're opening up our sixth sense and all the other senses and awaken awareness because the game's sort of over. It's, we play the game, then we move on. You, you're doing a lot with the Mary Indians, aren't you? A yeah, lot of yeah. things, sweat lodges and things like Absolutely. that. Absolutely. And that you've really cottoned on to that more recently, right? Well, yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, there's a great prediction that the Native said. You see, because we've got hundreds of millions of years of Native Americans living in America that have been genocided by white men. We don't have hundreds Every, of millions. Well, however, however long, I can't, I, but... Thousand, ten thousand years, whatever. Maybe ten, well, there's a big difference. Yeah, hundreds of millions and ten thousand. But by the time you're about dead, ten thousand, so well, whether it's right. twenty years or two hundred or two thousand, mm. twenty thousand, okay, okay, I don't want to be a, a mute stickler. point because I'm oh. not really an archaeologist who understands all this. And you're an if, artist. Yeah, but yeah. even <laughs> if I did understand it, my carbon-based data was such that would just be my opinion. Yeah. Right. The reality is that there's been multi generations of human beings living on the planet. In America, the native people very respectful, and everything was sacred. Yeah. You know, the the spider medicine, the clouds, everything was sacred. Yeah. And then white man comes along and gives us religion. So we got to salute Jesus once a week. Mm. What the hell is that? Mm. And then, and they said when 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 the white and the son of white man wears long hair and beads, it'll be time to bring out the knowledge. Uh -huh. And the knowledge is the wisdom of the ancients and the intergalactic connection that maybe a, an insect could be an intergalactic emissary ambassador from other galaxies. Maybe mm. there's lots more going on than meets the eye. Maybe mm. the, the wolf is not going to eat you. The wolf is going to warn you that the bear is coming and he's hungry and the bear is not going to eat you because you respect the great bear mm. with love and you look into his eyes as a fellow person and suddenly the bear will, will reel back and not eat you. This is how the native people treat life and nature. They respect yeah. nature. They talk to the tree. They hold the tree. The plant. They, some plants are poisonous. Some are healing. And to mm. understand all that is fascinating. Yeah. So I've been devoted to that. And the more, like anything, the more mm. you open up this can of worms, the bigger and better it gets. Yeah. Because it's connected with the moon, the stars, the earth, and, and the directions, north, east, south, and west. And, mm. and it's very beautiful that as they say, there's a great web of life. There's an interconnected, the great yeah. spirit. Yeah. Yeah. And this is what the internet has taught us, and that suddenly... We're all human. Isn't it great? My brothers and sisters in Iraq are not my enemy. Yeah, I, I love them and I pray for them. Yeah, I know you do. What the hell's going on? You know, mm -hmm. what the enemy of the terrorists in the White House are profiting with Martin Marietta and Halle Burton making bombs. These people are out of control. You're more political than your family is? I love my country, but yeah. what we have are thieves who stole democracy in this country and in Iraq now. Mm -hmm. They're not paying attention to the to democracy, the democratic consensus of the people. So you, you, you're, you're pretty political. Have you been political all your life? You get that in, in Spain? or <laughs> yeah. you always been? And uh, was your dad political? Not Mom? Too, no, granddad? No. He was liberal. No. My dad liberal, was a, a liberal. Yeah, yeah. Was, one of his yeah. lines was he was happy to say he, he didn't vote for Ron Reagan three times. Uh -huh. He worked with Ronnie in war films and uh -huh. taught him to play harmonica and uh, did war training films yeah. with him and has fun stories with him as a nice guy. Mm -hmm. But politically, he wasn't a good president of SAG because mm -hmm. taking away residuals from him. As a governor, he was lousy. And as a president, he was lousy. Uh -huh. and, Outside know. of that, he was grand. <laughs> yeah. Okay, a spokesman but, for GE. Okay. So it's possible to be in the arts and all. That's a question, political art, that kind of thing. That's a question, that large question. You're also a writer. You've done a lot of writing. Have well, you always been able to write? You think the writing is really important? Do you do playwright? Or what? Yeah. You write politically things that are really well, very, very well, well get, done. When I get angry or upset, uh -huh. I channel it out and, and hopefully make a comedy. It, so I've written, I have a play, uh, two comedies on God that are, were for Greenpeace. and st They're at Amazon.com. You can uh -huh. read the book. Okay, good. And at the Lincoln Center Library, you can see about five or six of my plays I've staged that are on the theater and tape library. Uh -huh. that have come born, born from human rights or echo rights or yeah. some social justice Yeah, you thing. put that together downtown here a little while ago. Then you yeah. had man makes the clothes or clothes the make clothes the man. Make the man. The That's all in rhyme. Man. That's in yeah. seven languages. Yeah, it was so. really well written. In Thank everything. you. Writing's yeah. important. The writing is important. There's a liaison between the writing and the acting. And yeah, everything. well, my grandfather was a famous playwright. I got maybe his muse or gene coming mm. to me, and I kissed the Blarney Stone in mm. Ireland, so somehow what I now get Now you're going into character. <laughs> well. As a, uh, <laughs> as a an Italian. No, as a night. I thought it was Italian. <laughs> well, I thought it sounded Italian well, to me. You said it's Italian. Italian. <laughs> Italian on the end of the I'm just kidding with you, okay? okay. I'm just kidding with yeah. you. Okay. Italian's fine. But you've been into that, so you've gone that way and everything. And then you, 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 uh, yeah, you, so we got you down writer, act, actor. 
I'm writer. like a renaissance man. Okay. All the arts, because okay. you expand in the it. arts, you get going in all the directions. So when I stage plays, I like to paint them. And I was in past life, in the 16th century, a, 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 a painter. What do you so mean a wet, pa life? wet paint that? brush always makes from? me happy. What's that paint like past life? Well, you I've got done some... a few past life you've, regressions. and I've had, you a had that? You've done that? Yeah, a number you've of had times. Had it's very good therapy. Well, oh, Sometimes people can find out why they're so screwed up, or why they're afraid of elevators, or why they hate water. They might have been drowned in a past life. So that's sort of philosophy. You're a reincarnationist, or you think? There's past lives that you, your spirit, and Harold. Your being there's tons of books in Barnes and Noble, and not only in this country, but throughout every culture that talk about reincarnation as yes, a reality, and it's been scientifically tradition. proven. Someone goes into lead into hypnosis, and they speak different languages from ancient Mesopotamia or something. I mean, what is that? That's coming from their soul memory. Yeah, or I mean, Rupert been Church, proven. Sheldrake, and morphic resonancy. They got to where a monkey. They'll learn something in Africa, uh -huh. and with no internet or anything. The monkeys in Australia <laughs> do what the monkeys in Aus uh, Africa learn. Well, that's the hundredth monkey. Like so, that's hundredth like, monkey that's, or something. That's yeah. Rupert with, Sheldrake. So from what I understand was on an island or something when they, they dumped a bunch of potatoes on the sand and, and uh, they, so they documented monkeys eating but didn't like it because that's sandy. But then when they taught, one monkey taught another monkey to wash the sand off the potato, mm. they got the hang of it. And by the time the, the 99th, the hundredth monkey got it, on the other side of the island, suddenly the, the, there was a connect. There was a psychic, telepathic link yeah. that all the monkeys on the island got it. That's pretty on that island, but it was one that was much further, like it was in Australia or something. It, the creature picked it up away over there, and its morphic resonancy. And the Vedics uh -huh. have been telling us forever that everything is a seamless web. And it right. is, apparently. Well, we yeah. saw some people talking about... That's why it's important. That's getting back to why I've gotten back to the Native American studies. Mm -hmm. And uh, every full moon, I do a fire ceremony in other people's gardens or mine or wherever to bring or to salute the full moon because instead of going to Sedona, Arizona to a vortex or some sacred site to get into a higher conscience, we create the vortex now because we are the living library of the universe. We are, we are a living. cosmic, divine energy package. We mm -hmm. are... To be human means you've got all cellular memory in your bone and blood going back billions of years to every lifetime and connected to all of the universes. Well, but yeah. I think that we're sort of quarantined. We're sort of like uh, marshaled off because we're so bellicose as a, as a human species that kills each other. But when people enter the light and love each other and really communicate and honor the four directions on Earth with love, that we create a beacon of light, and then again, the, the extraterrestrials who are so prolific but have to manifest to see us because we can't go into the higher conscience to see them. Uh, when we That's open a up big to jump there, but go ahead, go ahead. We allow, we, are, we will we, be welcome into the intergalactic brotherhood when we prove that we as a mankind are not bellicose. Right now we're cheerleading war and we like to love violence. Haven't they always, all, I had some historians, they read all of human history and there were only about three or four of uh, a couple of decades or something when, they, when there wasn't some major war going on in the history of mankind 200,000 years. They've always been making war. Well, with that's, one that's something that we believe in, brain. but we can't believe in that anymore. That's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. In the future, the next thousand years, we're going to be in a peaceful period, and all this stuff will be barbaric history. We learn in second and third grade in kindergarten conflict resolution. You and I are never going to get anywhere if we fight. They didn't have that when I was in We can disagree, and we can have problems, but if we come to fisticuffs, mm. what is that? That's ridiculous. Well, I think historically, Frank, and James Joyce, one of your favorite poets, <laughs> Uh, said history is a nightmare from which I'm attempting to awaken. Well, now we're and awakened, and we, we don't act like primitive barbarians anymore. If we have differences, we'll work them out. We come to the tribal council. This is what the elders teach us. Are you certain of that? We're going to work it out? Are you optimistic for the human prospect? Well, of course. You are? Of course? Uh, the, the, the planet Earth is going to go through climactic changes. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a great purging, and, they even, and there's going to be a, light, a lot of light hitting the planet, like in 1987, August 17th, the harmonic convergence, when five planets aligned, and people were wakened up into a higher conscious. And what's going to happen in the next five years is suddenly we're going to be having heart attacks and nervousness, and there there might be some bombs and nuclear bullshit, well, wait, but, wait, but wait, the wait, reality wait. is that humankind will survive, and those of us that ground the light and practice meditation and know that we're spiritual beings and do volunteer work at m or whatever or have conscientiousness about echo rights, animal rights, human rights, are going to be able to vibrate at this frequency. But the majority of us who watch TV all day and don't want to think, drink beer and cheerlead war are going to be freaking out, getting heart attacks, and just f living in fear, and will die. You collect a lot of different things together, like drinking beer 
fear and watching <laughs> Well, television. I'm just using it as you, an example. You, you, to live, you either live in fear or you live in faith. When okay, you live in faith, you start big. grounding the light because we are light, energy beings. Uh -huh. and, and the light is the information, the truth. Light hits the planet and feeds all of nature. And we can feed off light, believe it or not. The photons of the light can nourish us and we can Rip live on a lot less food. We could, there are breatharians who claim not to eat at all. There you go. We could probably live on spirulina if we had to, an algae, and that sort of thing. There's lots of things yeah. we can live on. But it's you're, belief. You're, the mind, see, the mind creates reality. And so I believe something, boom, that becomes my, my truth. You create your own reality? To, to much, to much the uh, truth. I, I was talking to the doctor the other day. I introduced her. The idea is that they said it was 70%, 76% placebos affect uh, healing and, and neurological remedies and stuff. Is that true? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't hear that. That was a yeah. figure that yeah. she came up with, a mm. study in London and mm. stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, placebo, what is placebo? It's a belief system. Mm. Everything is like psychologically based. And many yogis and gurus will say that, you know, you don't need disease. You just chant Om and you find balance because it's about finding balance. When you're sick and you're stuck, you're, you're addicted, what you have, there's a, we're struggling to find a connection with God, with love, and with balance. Mm -hmm. And we can't find it because God is generous. And well, love some, is available to us. Some of our wisdom traditions have been saying that, the, the Vedic things and that kind of thing have been saying that. But I wouldn't want to live in an age before there was effective anesthesia. <laughs> and when you had your leg being chopped off or cut off because of a gangrene or something, you had to bite on a bullet. Right. But or I wouldn't want to live without antibiotics. They've been doing that for thousands of years, yeah. right? Mm. And how do they do it? Mm. The endorphins kick in. Like when in, in nature, when, 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 when a bird is in the clutches of the wolf and it knows its prey, it suddenly relaxes and, the st and stops its fluttering because it knows it, it, it enters the food chain. Mm. The endorphins kick in and suddenly it's at peace and it knows it'll become they prey. They that and, about and, people at the end. And people uh, too. The they, they know that if their leg is going to be sewn off and they just go out. You know, they just say, forget it. Okay, go. And then they don't feel the pain. Yeah. But but Many little... people have had bullets wounds or wounds and stuff, and you just, the mind controls, even though your nervous system is saying, <laughs> ouch, ouch, ouch. Mm. The more you say, ouch, so you're gonna, the mind attracts what it dwells upon. It's a magnet. Mm. So if you let it go, and you say, okay, it's in divine order, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let go and let God, boom, you have a different mindset and power. Mm hmm. Well, you got a lot of things in there. You sure throw a lot out in a short period of time. It's almost like a haiku, you know. But I'm glad to hear you're optimistic. I'm not so sure I can be optimistic without feeling a little pally, pay, uh, Pollyannish, you know. Well, the, 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 the dark forces are going to play out their game. You know, the multimillionaires are not going to be happy to their multi-billionaires. And even then, they're going to be multi-multi-billionaires. Brilliant. Whatever. They, yeah. There's no end in sight to mm. greed. There's mm. no end in sight to lust and appetites or, or a sex addict or, or a drug addict or any person who's caught up in their, in their BS is going to keep spinning the cycles of their vicious cycle. Mm. But when you go into the higher vortex of God and Mother Earth by simple God, Gardening, by simple respect, by love, like a mother watches a child, she suddenly feel, or a person watches a pet mm. and learns from the pet, you, you enter a new zone of higher conscience by going into that spiritual space that's just nothing. You're just holding space in harmony. And that's basically what it's about, being harmless and harmonious with the universe and with those around us to affect healing and be at peace. Higher conscience or consciousness? Consciousness. Consciousness. You said conscience. Yeah. Maybe well, sorry. Maybe Con a higher conscience. conscience there may be yeah. a hierarchy of conscience too. Sure. You know, in terms of uh, people, and maybe things are think things are getting better through time. Well, of course, they, they do they, think so, that. No, but everything is mm. everything is accelerating in its own little game. Mm. So the Bush and Cheney game is getting richer and richer and more powerful and more fascistic. That's the and, and the my absurd. freedom is getting more and more powerful and beautiful. Uh -huh. Even though I live in America and I'm subject to fascist police who are, might be arrest me. If I just let my insurance lapse in my car or some BS and the, and the controls of this country, it's getting more and more obvious that we've lost this country to the fascistic neo-Nazi forces. A, I had a Whereas we used to say this in the 90s, no. oh my God, they're coming and Clinton, New World Order, Janet Reno, this stuff is BS. Now we, really, we kick back and laugh and you can say to any party, yeah, yeah, we know Bush, you know, and Cheney. These people, it's obvious well, had, to most anyone that these, these people are, are out of control sociopaths. Yeah, I had, I had a friend of mine say, we're it's, it's, it's the other day said it's, it's Germany 1930, and I said, well, you're probably thinking Germany about 1933 after Reichstag <laughs> or something. And then the thing is, yeah, and they're saying, but the thing is that if uh, by 1939, 1940, Hitler had 97 percent full. 
still boogie support from the people of Germany, whereas Mr. Bush, there may be hope in that. It seems it's down to 19 percent. Yeah, but or what it switched? And he, it's a new he facade. Want, they got no, but it, Hitlery or Obama. They got a pseudo Democrat who's a corporate whore making money off of these Martin Marietta and General Dynamics um, sponsoring. Who, who who are you talking about? The the the, the, the new facade of the new world order. Oh, you know well. we, we okay. Bush has lost favor of the public, and you yeah. take heart in that. But meanwhile, everyone's a cheering Obama or Hitlery, who's a pseudo Democrat pretending to represent the people's interests. But what about Cynthia? McKinney mm. of the Green Party or people that stand up for 9-11 truth mm. or investigate real malfeasance on part of the government and, mm. and corporate fraud. Mm. You know, so we'd like to cheer this, this Hitlery female, supposedly like Condoleezza Rice. Yeah. She's, th these people are not real women and, and real connected to the, to the people you, and you, what we need. You, 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 you seem to be politically <laughs> motivated. You seem to have political... How is Cynthia? She got voted out from the Congress, right? Yeah, she's always in trouble she because she's out front. She's like a loudmouth black, like like Bella Abzug, mm -hmm. Maxine Waters. With uh, the hat. She always had a big God hat. God bless Bella. Yeah, yeah. A Jewish woman, you mm -hmm. know, whatever. Mm -hmm. But the idea is a woman who stands up and says, I'm, I'm your mama. I'm mm -hmm. representing you. Mm -hmm. That's what we need, a real... Yeah. What Good about the woman. thing about how we've always had, they had Ro Roman, they had emperors and they had kings and you had serfs on the estate wallowing around in the mud. And there was always <laughs> a few people that had all the resources of power in the society. Right, throughout history, the then king sends the peon like, off to war. Go fight my war, enrich my kingdom. And we go, yes, sir. Yeah. But you still have a plutocracy in every political entity on the planet that runs everything and has all their assets, more or less, and the power and that sort of thing. It's a small group. In no, every we're going, but no, do you no, think no, there's something we're going back to where no, the people excuse me, you're wrong, en masse Mr. might begin to have more of an influence. What you just said is incorrect. Okay. What you said is correct for European history. Mm. But as far as Native American history, we've always been the tribe. We've been the communal. We sleep in the same teepee and we share the buffalo meat. You and the talking. elders, when you're 50 years old, you're an elder, you're on the council, you have a vote. Mm. The medicine wheel is gathered and we decide what's best for the community and for the seventh generation. That's pretty That's ideal. That's how native people live from the top of Alaska to the bottom of uh, Chile. Well, the I, Andes, the primitive people, that no one touch with nature, no one touches the one big family well, and we're all connected. This is the truth of what, Ameri what human beings knew. Well, what white man has, has pushed upon us with his has versus has nots and royal family snobbery has created a, a total a sick society that cheerleads war and violence and plunges into debt to, to make the, the, the leader richer. Well, I happen to have done my research and uh, doctoral research in South America for the Tiwanaku culture, which is a foundation for, for um, South America. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, they, that's where it started there. And they had an empire went up to Venezuela, and then there are the Aztecs. They used to take people up to the top of, and it was very hierarchical, very much. Uh, the Inca was very higher. I mean, you're yes, romanticizing. Yes, the Aztec and Maya civilization. Those were big civilizations, like Roman Empire. Of course, it was a big monkey But I heard muck. you say South America and the same thing. You're, you're no, romanticizing. No, I was talking about indigenous tribal communities. In North America. You're talking and about Latin places America where they... And Latin America and Africa. Indigenous tribal communities. Well, the... Communities is the community. Yeah, but you're talking about a uh, tribal, I'm well, I'm about tribal mindset where the taking, word communism comes from. But where wherever we, where you community, have, we share everything. There was a guy named Whit Fogel. He wrote a book called a a Oriental Despotism, and it was the irrigating systems that came along with uh, civilization. Civilization means literally city dwelling, I believe. Okay. All right. So the advances of civilization and so forth is what you seem to have a brief with. Well, you want us to live in wild nature? Like, no, no, uh, no, no. You're right. Kavinsky, Even you know, in indigenous or? culture, the civilization has a hierarchy and a pecking order. And yeah, the high they priest do. And they're, and, they're the, and the leaders have the gold, and the peasant has to do the work. Mm -hmm. Fine. That's always existed. But basically... And it still is that way today. Yes. There are a few people, investment bankers, well, or a power structure, C. Wright Mills would have said, and then most of the people are like serfs on a feudal estate. Right, and the CEOs of, get, 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 get bonuses for downsizing and, and outsourcing their, their workers and ruining the company and, that's in every and get an extra million dollars. That's in that, every political entity yeah, on the planet and the overall But we know that's itself. insane. That's selfishness. That's yeah. ridiculous. Mm. Authority versus majority. That's my logo. That's my production company. Authority versus majority. It's a game. So, yes, I have faith that the majority 
majority, the, the truth will prevail, the lies will fail. Well, What's going to happen is yeah. that we know we're family, we know we're all connected, and we know we have to share. Yeah, but our spiritual leaders have been telling us that forever, and it's widely and Yeah, there you go, the roundly, spiritual leaders. Yeah, but it's widely ignored by the political leaders, and the political leaders are still in control, and they got weapon systems that can wipe out the whole system now, and yet you think everything's going to be okay. Of course it's going to be okay. 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 Because for three reasons. A, God exists. Whether you're an atheist or not and you don't believe in God, there is a higher intelligence and a master that sort of makes sure that things aren't going to get out of Like you, you see the baby play with fire and fool around and can goof off, but you know you're not going to burn the house down. Whoa, whoa, don't go too far. But that's a generalized principle that may or may not be the case. You're talking to me and this is my belief. Okay. I okay. may be wrong. Of okay. course, I don't know. I'm yeah, just a right. human being. Right. Yeah, right. Okay. But I have just faith in God. Point. You may be and, wrong. And if I feel that God will not allow us you to may destroy be, ourselves. You may not be. And maybe God may allow us to do because we have free will. God isn't a oh, dictatorship of goodness. Well, then that God has given us free will. Uh -huh. So if some knucklehead like Bush or Cheney push the button instead of going and say, I'm not a crook and bowed out, and then they do destroy the planet, fine. Well, the, well, the, whole minute, day, the repercussions that, of the universe of will be very sad. That's all of us. <laughs> they can do that now. They couldn't do so it They can't the destroy our spirit. Listen, we shouldn't. Well, destroy your body, but mm. your spirit continues. Oh, well, there your you go. Your home, you know, we blow our home. Well, right. Planet's sacred. Now, I think there's another dynamic. Mother Earth, Gaia, has her own Gaia. energy field that's truth oh, that right. relates to protection. And that besides all of our guardian angels, we all have spirits around us, too, that are working over time. Besides people like you and me doing the right thing and people trying to do the right thing and justice trying to lurch forward and do the right thing. So there's uh -huh. intelligent design, there's spiritual design, and there's higher cosmic forces at work. So well, there's a lot of stuff that's not we're not aware of, but that is going to protect us. You and basically common sense. We don't want to destroy ourselves in a nuclear cloud. Right. We don't want to allow these maniacs and sociopaths in control. They've mm -hmm. got to step down uh -huh. from power. Well, okay, in a, in a unique kind of way and everything. We've gotten off on to kind of a lot of politics <laughs> here and everything. I didn't realize that I'd opened a, uh, you know, a volcanic uh, Pandora's box here in terms of introducing these political things. But we, you, you're an, also an artist, a painter. Yeah. And we brought in some slideshow, Thank right? You. We yeah, brought yes. in a slide. Why don't we go Appreciate into a more it. sublime thing and right. show some of the well, paintings the, of Iraq War? Transmitting <laughs> my, my angst and my spirituality yeah. onto canvas is yeah. another way of expressing myself. Okay, well, listen, in the booth, right, George? Maybe you could set up that slideshow. Oh. we got about 50-odd uh, slides that we can go through yeah. because we haven't shown, we've talked this stuff before with you, Frank, okay? But we haven't shown some of your paintings like that, so can we Well, call it's a new revelation for me, too, to devote myself to moon, new moon and fire ceremony in the four directions. Yeah, I know you're really into that. But I find it empowers me, and it only makes sense. Planting fruit trees is the only thing that okay, makes sense Okay, here's a painting. Nowadays. Now, talk about that. There you go. The, <laughs> a god of war. Well, this poor, right? this poor guy this pulling the arrow, right? and they want to zoom back on that. You know, this poor woman is being blown. Can. That's a pray for Iraq. That's a detail from a painting. It took me mm. a year. It's my Guernica. Okay. That, you're, that pray for Iraq is Guernica to you? Yeah. Well, this is this is my painting called this Pray is for Iraq. It is like a, it's like a, it's a painting called Pray for Iraq. The poor people of Iraq are yeah, suffering I bombs know. and living in. Yeah, and Palestine and all over the right. place. Right, and the people of Afghanistan. Okay, can we go, uh, go ahead to Palm another Dula. one then, Frank? This is. That's a. It's Another written, detail. It's, yeah, that's yeah, like ancient uh, writing, and in the verse in the Quran, there in Arabic says, oh, "There's American culture. That's what's moving in: McDonald's, Monsanto, Terminator seed, engineer crops, mm -hmm. money, profit." They had a hell of a time to get Picasso to do Guernica because he thought it was <laughs> political and he didn't want to get roped into politics. But <laughs> Guernica to put him to where he did that. Yeah. Hey, okay. Wanna, we'll move out of that thing. Yeah, go on to You know, another. an anecdote about Picasso. Oh, this is called, um, oh, uh, I don't know. Her shoulder's doing a double take. See, she's got that mouse there. She's afraid. I don't know. Shoulder doing a double take? <laughs> like called? She's, uh, that's protecting her belly. Uh, okay. The Nazis came in and saw Guernica, and they said to him, did you do that? Uh. He says, no, you did. <laughs> uh, yeah, right. No, he was. He, he didn't want to do He was. They were trying to else. get him. They were trying to get him into the anti-fascist thing, uh -huh. and he wasn't going to go there. Well, he politics. was a communist, though. Yeah, well, Supposedly, I, yeah, sometimes. He was a pretty so, greedy communist. Well, okay. <laughs> anyway, we better move through these quick, because there's 50. So yeah, we don't, we should should oh, this right is called why television is so popular. Uh -huh. It's because it's amalgamated into the boob tube of what our life adores. We've got the four different sections mm -hmm. of uh, ego, unknown zone, outside influences, and our dream state. We could talk five hours on that. <laughs>
<laughs> but let's go to the next one then and just let them see some of these works, okay? Let's go ahead pretty quickly. That's a man poking his nose into woman and she just loves it. Mm -hmm. That's a self-portrait. It's self-portrait. Yeah, okay. I did that in 92 at the Olympics. Uh -huh. There's a, there I am on the boat. That's just a simple painting. Mm -hmm. That's uh, the illusion of sexual contact uh, uh -huh. modeled after Susie Depperman, our friend. That's an, it's a Mother Earth ravaged by, there's a looking at the cosmos, what the message of the stars are. There's the teacher's pet. That's a, yeah, that's sort of a fun drawing. See, there's the teacher's pet. She's raising his hand, her hand. Uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> what do you work, acrylic mostly? Yeah, yeah, acrylic paint drawing. There I am. That's you on do my, oil at that's all? That's on my roof. Sure. Yeah, okay. uh, that's, a, that's like a mandala. That's like a spiritual thing. I like to paint on ceilings and murals. It's a merkaba. Actually, negative, positive, it's like the zodiac. There's mm. a negative, positive force field around every blade of grass and human being. Okay. And uh, we have this energy, electromagnetic energy, which is uh, electro man, ma magnetic female. There's Paradise to Hell. The uh -huh. past is perfect. That's fashion statement. That's just mm. a fun painting. Fashion statement with a tie, a real tie. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. That's just an artsy thing. That's just a Mother Nature. Uh, there's Picasso getting drunk in a bar drawing mm -hmm. a few years ago. There's an astral body. You see the thing floating over her? She's sleeping. And that's above us uh, is an astral. Okay. There's the guitarist. Oh, yeah, that I know. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that, 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 that's in my mind, yeah. That's a painting of... A, that's a tribute the, to Reed Stowe, who's sailing on right, his thing Right, a good old Reed. Out. Le Reed Bois de Saint-Tropez. He had to let Sonia off the boat now. He's oh, really? 310 days. She had to get off at Perth. Yeah, but One. he's going to go on. Seasick. Oh, I mean, it's just baby. too much. This is uh, reaching for a rock to grasp onto a star over his shine sort of for you. There's 9-11. There's like the end of our rope. That's actually just to see. And there's the chase. There's a woman going one way, the guy going the other way. And uh -huh. This is man conducting creation. Back to his womb weaving. See, you could just, you could spin off In between, hours well, I see the I macrocosm of his hand. It's all written in our hands. In the microcosm of our hands and in the macrocosm of our stars. There's the, there's the devil. That's a symbol of the devil. The pet goat. That's called Never pet Forget goat. the Pet Never Goat. Never Forget See? the Pet Goat. George is reading to 20, 20 minutes. minutes. Yeah, he had to read it. to the, you know. Yeah. This is uh, people bigger or smaller than you. That's Atlantean healer. Is that Gandhi? Through our eyes. No, it's a, just a, a soul mm. past life. That's just a picture, art, color, because colors heal. You need you know, yellow, orange, blue. That's a woman that's wondering whether to let that man in my, in my womb or not. Mm. That's lovemaking. That's a drawing. Mm. Mm. There's a sacred Merkaba, again, the negative positive energy, the influences of the electromagnetic field. There's a sacred fire, there's smoke in the, the person in the smoke, the sp great spirit. There's three sperms in a tug of war discussion over the destiny of one fertile egg. There's, uh, there's Mother Earth ravaged by macho mankind. This is Miss Fly passes by, not catching her fly or the gift. There's Paula Gloria in the sunrise. That's the glorious prayer before sunrise. Oh, yeah, she does. She does. There's yeah. another prayer, praying for love. Mm -hmm. That's Adam and Eve hanging out in paradise. Mm -hmm. Water, earth, fire, air. Those are the spirits of 9-11. See, the w criminal plane went one way and the air defense went the other. That's the... Rio de Janeiro? Anticipating bad news. That's Didn't we see this one? Oh, well, these are... That's just a... Oh. A, Another yeah. picture, just yeah. a drawing, painting, uh -huh. charcoal. Uh -huh. Skin and soul. Peel back the skin and you have the soul. Mm -hmm. See the face in the clouds? Yeah. It's, we're all transient beings. That's my heart. It's divided into four sections. Pe family, friends, alone, and new people. Not ventricle. And There's negative, positive fluences. <coughs> this is a time to grow through time. See, it's like the, the energy. When it enters the womb, it's very serious, the game. Mm -hmm. That's dream heart. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, the guitar, the music, correlating with a with a rainbow. You also Chakras. play guitar. Yeah, play yeah, guitar. Play, yeah. I've been playing all my life. Yeah. Yeah, harmonica. In Barcelona, you got to in Spain. Yep, Andalusia. Oh, we're back to the square one. Okay, that's the slideshow. Right. Thanks. Okay, that's so good. we just went through some of the art. Thank okay, you, we Michelle. Okay, we went through that quickly. That was we're a quick show there. of uh, art, and we're now back on the set. And you went through a lot of things. Thank you, you go through things like the crazy. You go through. <laughs> they they interrelate. The arts are interrelate. The theater. The, the art. universe is ours. We're yeah. like in a we're in a, we're in. A, you know the eternity symbol. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay, eternity yeah. is a symbol of God. All right. So okay. God is everywhere, right? Yeah. Isn't but God everywhere at all times? Well, I, well, that you gotta. I mean, that, this is a thing, but it's molecules in motion, right? Yeah, right, right. 
Yeah. So God is everywhere. Now, do you know how real? So how can we not be an artist, paint? How can we not like music? We just give our don't give. Our, when someone asks you, do you play piano? You should say, I don't know. I never tried. Uh huh. And sit down at the keyboard and see what happens. I've done that, but it's pretty disastrous. <laughs> I've done that. I can do Yankee Doodle Dandy, and I don't. You have can. It. There you go. Yeah. yeah. I can. But uh -huh. I'd like to. Maybe I'll give it a shot. No, I mean I do one finger at a time. You know, I can't uh, play the piano. Um, Vladimir Horowitz can play the piano, but anyway, he can play the piano yeah. better than you. But yeah. just because you can crank out a tune with one finger will make people happy. Not Harmony. only better, <laughs> much better. <laughs> <laughs> and anyway, or Tiger Woods can play golf better. You got experts, and that's why you got people that are leaders and the people have the thing. And you don't want to. Care. What about the people? You know, there's a hundred trillion cells in the human organism. Do you realize they're now got an ad out on television to get into the national, into the consciousness, popular consciousness. A hundred trillion cells in a human <laughs> organism, and every cell matters. Yep, and every cell, and has, every a, cell has an intelligence. That's why I believe in every immortality. Cell has a design. Because I've scratched myself, or the cat scratched me, but soon this will be healed up, and the, the cell will regenerate, and the the, the memory will go. And we, we, the cells re replicate and I replenish know. themselves. You ever read Lewis Thomas, Lives of a Cell? It's a beautiful book. Anyway. So, so we have the possibility to find healing within. And that's where I believe that I know that actually we have the... You get a flu, that's a virus. And they're afraid of the AIDS virus and all that thing. I always say, I'll oh, yeah. flush it out of your system, just like a flu virus. It's not a death knell. It's a mm. warning mm. that it's time to wake up. Cancer isn't a death knell. It's a warning. Wake up. Go into raw foods. Go into breathing. Go into the healing modality and find your balance. But the point I was If you believe, oh, I'm going to die, I'm going to die, we have the death urge, okay, goodbye. Well, no, you you're entitled to die. Norman Vincent Peale used to see, think positive, young man, or, <laughs> you know, that kind of thing and everything. That's a positive thinking. But I, what I'm getting at really is that, 100 trillion cells and they all matter and yet in the human affairs you've got a few people who control everything and everybody else are like serfs on a feudal estate do you think there's any future for democracy in the planet uh, a real democracy that could mimic like Gaia and if you start talking about Gaia among scientists, they get I very I see it upset. right here. Now, do you share but my you thought? I'm see saying? the 100th monkey. There... Everyone, listen. See the perfect piece of democracy and authentic democracy. Visualize it. Authentic democracy. You think this is a... We have not had authentic democracy since, uh, if we had anything in, in raw nature or back nature. I, th I probably think it was pretty grim back in the early days, 200,000 years ago or something, I would think. But then you get civilization, and then you've always had a power structure, you've always had imbalance and everything. Right. Do you think there's something Well, no, as, as I said, that uh, the unwritten history of the indigenous people knew the tribal uh, mindset of one family and the survival and the sharing of the hunt mm. and the ability to survive. Yeah, but frankly, And that I'm is our found. nature to actually share and love. We love to come in M&N &M and share our, our efforts, our energies. Oh, we maybe. love to have a party mm. and share our food. Our time, our energy. Yeah. We, we, that's those our nature positive, to give. We're those, happy when we're giving and loving. They, that's yeah, our nature. When, when they talk about human nature, often people say, like, particularly if you say there's no, you know, there's no, there's no free lunch, or they got these ideas of nothing like. That's um, what they force us to believe. But the reality is, a free lunch, and the best things in life are free. Best things in life. <laughs> That's what comes from love. Are free. When you're yeah. in love with someone, you yeah. give them freely. Mm -hmm. When you share with someone, you care someone. Yeah. When, you're, but I was when talking... you go to a party, you bring a bottle, you drink some wine, the host gives you champagne. Yeah, that kind it's of like it's like they invite yeah. you to a dinner. It's yeah. a great memory. It's yeah. like, yeah, my best times. Yeah. I had good times. Yeah. Because of the generosity of the nature of human spirit. And this well, is how we're gonna come back to our neutral do you think spirit. We and have the more spiritual we get, and when you see really spiritual people, not pseudo spiritual people, but real people like Mother Teresa and everybody that are very loving and helpful and kind, they, whatever your religion, you, you're, you're in good company. It's great. Uh, uh, yeah, I love uh, that. Uh, that's the thing. Is inherent. These irresistible in their material needs, and you can never have enough. You can never have a situation. But that creates insanity. You that's why the ego you drives us crazy. But the new book, A Course in Miracles, the new teaching of Jesus, of teaches miracles, yeah. to get away from the ego mm. and know that the ego can only drive you crazy. Mm. And if you live within your ego, you'll never be satisfied. A lot of people you'll do. You'll keep wanting more appetite, more food, more money, more attention. Mm -hmm. But when you sit back and you listen to someone and you try to sh engage with them, even if they're young, especially if they're younger, oh, younger, you, you, gorgeous. 
you, you suddenly there's a give and take, and life has a beautiful blending. And that's the nature of our, our true nature, is to give and love and share. Well, a lot of people think they've got a, uh, a, 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 what do you call it, a, um, you know, the inside track on defining what human nature is. Or... Dorian Sagan just wrote this book with Lynn Margulis about Gaia. She's in touch with uh, <laughs> Lovelock and all that. And it says, um, notes from, no, he wrote a book, Notes from the Holocene, A Brief Look at, no, I got it mixed up, The Nature of Nature, or The Nature of Things. So people think they have an idea about what human nature is. Right, right. There's lots of schools and of a lot psychology of and yeah, psychiatry, and a lot I'm of saying. studies, and a lot of Bush and Cheney, Herman Goebbels, Nazi propaganda that's going to promote war and fear. I don't know. Whatever anybody says is fine. All I can do is hope for the best and pray to God and feel that we are going in a beautiful paradise because we do live in a beautiful paradise as far as nature is what concerned. About the, what about the why thing Why can't I, we get to our nature? Well, why, uh, that, that you, you say if we get to our nature that, but other people say it's impossible for us to ever get there because our nature is inherently unable to get there. I mean, there's people that do that well, kind of thinking. Well, granted, yeah. there are selfish people and there are selfless right, people. Right. Are you happy being selfish no, they, and they or will are say, you happy being if generous? If somebody's selfish, they're probably going to... Just think about it for a minute. If somebody's really selfish and na nasty and all that kind of thing greedy, they're probably going to assume that that is human nature. Yeah, right. And they probably got and to the top. those are usually of, the people in power. At the top. They got to the top. They're in power. But because they're they greedy assume, for power. They assume that that is reality. human nature yeah. and reality. The, and they will the, say, these are sort of like don't, mutants. Talk, don't talk about all your love and things and all love is all you need and you artists and all you people right. and everything like democracy. Well, real exactly. Democracy. Don't so, talk so about it. So there are hippie communes that are flourishing mm -hmm. and Seneca Nation and the Amish community mm -hmm. and there's nice church groups and good spiritual people and then there's these sentence that are out there in bullshit and then we have fantasy of power we live in our freedom and we're still ensconced within institutions we've inherited out of the history which james jace called a nightmare of <laughs> injustice and it's been injustice throughout the whole period in terms of anything like a hundred trillion cells of a human organism all working in concert in a way where it's really in a liberated kind of way. we haven't had that so you're thinking we're yes we had because you, you know don't what think we you have. know upstate there's farms there's farms with the bible thumping racists and there's farms with uh, hippie communes that are very free and fun loving and uh, but maybe uh, some farms work and sometimes don't. Do you get up? Do you chop wood and carry water? Are you doing the chores? Are you weeding the garden? It's 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 what you command. You command the universe. You're king of your castle. Well, I'm king of my castle. Mm -hmm. And what 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 is the energy field that I admit? So let me just add. You only got about a minute left, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> we've been all over the place, including the outer universe, and now we got a couple minutes. Actually, a couple we can get a couple of haiku pieces in here. But I mean, are you optimistic? You are uh, apparently non pollyanna I have to be, even if, even if you I'm don't not. have to be. No, yes, I do. Even if I see doomsday and bleakness and Franz Kafka, bleak, black, you know, communist, it's fascist yeah. regime, come barbed wire everywhere. It's beyond I have Kafka. to be it's beyond positive. Kafka. It's species lethal now. We have to we live be, in a species it is lethal our, weapon system. We must be positive. We must ground the light because that's the truth. And we look at the spiritual connected or look at our sunrise the universe and go into your spiritual self and you feel released you become a butterfly with wings you fly beautiful artistic spiritually loving because it is what is best it's what we want freedom we all want we all we all love love joy safety and we can have it do you Even think rich billion very or dirt poor you want freedom, love, happiness? If you're your mother, you're wondering to starve, not enough to uh, incline. If you have to make these choice. And that's of a that, that end of the reborn 60, lifetime. That's six percent of the world kind of a situation. I mean, on a world us. And but we're all hungry. People are hungry. Right. And is not in place. And the in place. He lifted up that they had energy. He okay. Showed us. We have the same. This universe. 
scarcity. This, you have mm -hmm. all the thing we haven't. Space <laughs> continue, and we <laughs> energy and so. Well, okay, that we're on a pop, but it's and my is all in and go. I have the friends of uh, actor, this family, a writer, and our you can see actually. Motivated. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. And good to.